Welcome back. We have already talked about the sampling operation. In this lecture, we will start our discussion with sampling theorem. Sampling theorem is the fundamental bridge between analog and digital domain. Sampling theorem is widely used while the conversion of an analog signal into digital signal. One thing to note is the sampling theorem is applicable to the signals which are frequency limited. That means if a signal has an infinite frequency band, sampling theorem will not be applicable to it. If the signal is such that it is limited in frequency, it covers the certain range in the frequency domain, then sampling theorem will be applicable to it. Sampling theorem is also named as the Nyquist theorem or Nyquist Shannon theorem. It is basically the same thing that we have observed in our last lecture that if we are sampling at a rate that is not greater or equal to the double of the bandwidth or 2w then there will be overlapping between consequent images of the original spectrum it creates aliasing and we do not want that so for successful reconstruction of a signal we need to sample a signal of a frequency which is at least equal to twice the message bandwidth. This is the Nyquist theorem. So if our sampling frequency is fs and w is our bandwidth, then fs should be at least 2w. This fs or 2w is called Nyquist frequency or Nyquist rate or minimum sampling frequency. Now let's talk about anti-aliasing filter. In our first lecture, we already talked about the low pass filter that is used before the sampler block. That low pass filter is essentially an anti aliasing filter. Now, consider a practical signal. Our speech, a human speech basically, is time limited. It is not time unlimited, it's not spread over the infinite amount of time, it's, it is spread over a certain time interval. So, if a signal is time limited, it is bound to be infinite in the frequency spectrum. As we have said, if a signal covers infinite frequency band, then aliasing must take place. So, for avoiding aliasing, we must make the signal frequency limited, and we can do that by using a low pass filter. So, we use a low pass filter to make the signal frequency limited, and then we move on to our next block of sampling. An anti-aliasing low pass filter is used before the sampler block. Finally, uh, let's talk about the reconstruction filter because after the signal is transmitted, we want to recover the original message from that. Now, as we have seen, after sampling, the original spectrum is repeated in both positive and negative frequency axis the certain interval fs and we want our fs to be at least equal to the double of the message bandwidth which is 2w you can see from this spectrum we want to recover our original spectrum so we only want this gray spectrum and we want to cut out all the other spectrums in the right and the left direction what we can do easy we can use a low pass filter this is a low pass filter if we multiply this low pass filter with this signal in frequency domain, we will get this back. So basically, the reconstruction filter is a low pass filter, and this low pass filter is of this shape. It has the cutoff frequency of W. If we multiply this low pass filter with this signal, output will be only the original spectrum. That is our objective. Now, the square wave. As we can see, the low pass filter is a square wave if we consider both the directions positive and negative. This square wave in the frequency domain is actually a sync wave in the time domain. You should already know about these transformations from your signal course. A sync wave in time domain is actually a square wave in frequency domain. Now, we already know that this spectrum in frequency domain corresponds to a weighted pulse strain. In the time domain 
So if we are multiplying this square wave or this low pass filter with this spectrum here, in time domain, we are actually convoluting this sync wave with that weighted impulse strain. You can see the uh, convolution operation. You don't need to do the convolution here, but you need to get the idea that in frequency domain, when we are multiplying the signal with this low pass filter, we are actually convoluting the original impulse strain, the weighted impulse strain with this sync function. That is the way we can recover the original signal.